let's shift focus now. The World Bank's 2017 Africa Pulse report estimated that closing sub-Saharan Africa's infrastructure quantity and quality gap would increase per capita GDP in the region by about 2.6%. And that's per year, of course. However, the reality is Africa's governments have neither the financial resources nor the technical expertise required to close the infrastructure gap by themselves. And that is why the continent is now looking to private equity firms operating in Africa to work alongside the public sector and other types of investors to provide capital and technical abilities to help develop the country's infrastructure asset. But are they responding to these opportunities? Well, let's find out what the numbers are saying from Eniton Obasanjo Adele. He, of course, is the head of research at the African Private Equity and Venture Capital Association, and he joins us now in London. You're very welcome to the show, sir. Now, your research on Africa's PE space revealed, well, I'm hearing that we don't have him right now. Oh, she. Very welcome to the sh show, uh, madame. Sorry for that earlier. Now, your research on Africa's PE space revealed that the number of PE infrastructure deals, uh, they increased from about 44 uh, between 2012 and 2014 to 53 in 2015 uh, and 2017. So are we seeing an adequate increase uh, in PE investment and activity on the continent? Good evening, Uche. Very, very, it's a pleasure to be with you this evening, um, and thank you for that introduction. So, yes, so our research showed that we had an increase from 44 to 53 in terms of the number of deals done um, for that between those two periods, but also we're seeing increasing fundraising activity. For, so over the same period, there was more than doubling in the amount of funds that are being raised targeting infrastructure specifically in Africa. So. Um, while this is a welcome rise, it certainly is, and uh, private equity funds are responding to the opportunity and working to bridge the gap with capital. Um, it's not, it's, it can't, there's more, a lot more to be done to attract private capital into infrastructure in Africa in general. Um, I mean, the World Bank estimates that, that the, the deficit is about $93 billion annually. So these numbers are not yet significant or at, at the level where they can adequately bridge that gap or even match the continued rise in that gap because uh, Africa's rapid urbanization means that no, that, that number does not stay still, does not stay static. So the rate at which that deficit is increasing is also increasing. Mm. Now, Anita, utilities we know generated about 50% or over 50% uh, of the share of volumes and value of PE infrastructure deals, and that's between 2012 and 2017. Now, looking at, looking at these numbers, what are some of the interesting trends uh, you have seen in terms of the sectors and the jurisdictions that are attracting the deals with the highest volumes and those uh, with the highest values as well? So well, you, as you rightly pointed, utilities have taken the biggest share because that's where uh, the, the area that's been identified with the biggest su supply demand gap. Um, and that's where a lot of capital has focused initially. But we've been seeing, and increasingly we're seeing not just under the utilities, there have been power projects, but we're seeing interest in off-grid and renewables specifically coming up. They tend to be smaller scale projects, but those are coming online and, and that's attracting a lot of interest and people have found um, a, a bankable or models of w ways of generating revenue while addressing the gap. Um, more recently, though, as well, there have been a lot of in, um, transactions in the utility space in the near in 2014, so a lot of investment in towers infrastructure. But in the more recent um, uh, past, and I mean in the, uh, in the last few weeks, we've seen an area where people have historically, or private equity funds haven't been historically been active. We've seen a couple of deals coming in in aviation, in, in the airline infrastructure. So that's quite interesting that where we're seeing the trends now. There have been a couple of transactions. Uh, notably, the African inf um, Infrastructure Investment Managers have just invested into um, an airport holding company that has five concessions of, across Africa. Mm. Well, thank you so much. Unfortunately, we have to leave it there, Eniton. But thank you for joining us on uh, the show. Of course, Eniton Obasanjo Adelaide joining us from Africa.